setting up a remote file server for free on your Windows computer or laptop, we got you covered. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. Uh, one question that comes up frequently about this YouTube channel is, how do you manage your file system, especially when you're dealing with remote editors? There are a ton of solutions out there and I'm not gonna tell you that this is the best solution. What I'm about to show you is the cheapest solution and it's the solution that we use. Now, you always see this computer behind me. This computer is a editing machine, but it is also always on because I use it as a file server. You see, way back here, you guys can't see very well, but if I go like this, you can see. Over here, I have just a little toaster that has a couple six terabyte hard drives in them. And yes, they are true hard drives. They're mechanical hard drives with platters and everything. So don't tell me I'm using the term wrong like you have done before. Sorry, that's a little bit mean. Hopefully you guys can see that, but I've done other videos before showing you kind of the toaster, showing you the hard drive setup, showing you all of that. But what I haven't shown you is how I actually make those files available remotely for my editors. Today I'm gonna to show you a little piece of software that we're gonna set up and actually create a file server that people can access. So the first thing that we're going to do is go to Google and we're gonna type in HFS. Now HFS is kind of, it's not a very popular search term. It's not strong in search terms. So right now when I search it, I do get regetto.com, which is the site that we're going to. If you do not get the regetto link that you see right here, then you can also add server to your search. And then that will almost always bring up the HFS server. Now we're gonna open this up just like this. And the website looks like it is very old, but it's pretty current. And all we're gonna do is go to the download page. We're going to download a 2.5 megabyte executable. It's gonna take you to SourceForge, which typically anything coming from SourceForge, I don't trust. So I can tell you that I have installed this on many machines and I have not noticed weird behavior. So I believe we can trust it, but you decide if it's worth trusting on your own, okay? I'm not gonna tell you to trust it. And there we go. So it should have downloaded. We would have seen it going on up here. And now here we go. So we have hfs.exe. And all we're gonna do is run this. Now it is going to, first off, Windows Defender is gonna freak out and say, uh, we're gonna block some features. We're gonna say allow access. We need to allow access because to get outside service, you have to allow access, okay? And then do you want HFS in your shell context window? Yes, I do. Can't write to registry. You may lack necessary rights. Why do I lack necessary rights? That's weird. Okay, anyway, so now I have a virtual file system. So this is the basic system. Now what we gotta do is set up the file that we wanna add. So now what I'm gonna do is on my C drive, my root C drive, I'm gonna make a folder called remote editor files. Now there's nothing in here, but if I go, let's see if I've got any pictures. I can put a Pikachu, actually let's put, we're gonna just add a, a picture in here so that we've got something to see. And this is just a picture of me holding the PSVR2 system. Okay, so that's gonna be sitting in there. But now what we gotta do is add that file server. So I'm going to just right click on here and I'm going to say add folder from disk. It's going to pull up a thing saying, okay, which folder do you want to add? Well, I want to add from this PC, C drive, and we called that folder remote editor files. So I'm going to go like that. Okay. Now it's going to ask you, is this a real folder or is it a virtual folder? In this case, it's a real folder. This folder actually exists. We've added the actual drive location, okay? Anybody who has the correct IP address can access that from inside your network. So if you wanna share it across multiple PCs, laptops, whatever, all you have to do is punch in this IP address, whatever IP address shows up in there, and you hit enter, and then it pulls up. There's no username, there's no password, there's no nothing. Now, technically, if someone knew your external IP address, they could also connect. So we are going to lock this down. But you can see, I have the folder called Remote Editor Files. When I open that folder, I have a screenshot, and if I click it, there's the screenshot. So this is remotely accessing that screenshot. Very, very easy, super easy. In a matter of minutes, we have set up a remote file server for free. 
Now, before we make this readily accessible over the World Wide Web, we do want to lock it down a little bit. The way we're going to do that is we're going to right click our folder and we're going to go to properties. Now you might want to go to set user password because that seems like the easy thing for you. Trust me, go to properties. Once we're in properties, this is where we're going to then create our new user account. And in this case, the user account is going to be called gears and the password is going to be tech and we'll repeat the password tech. Now we've created that account. You can see it right here. Now you have the option to say if you have read access, write access and delete access and upload access. Now, depending on who you're sharing with, you might want to give them read access, but not write access. So my editors, we're going to pretend gears is my editor. My editors have access to the folder, right? Simple. They do not get delete access. I don't want them to delete anything from there, but I do want them to be able to pull off what they need. They also have the ability to upload. So these are the two accesses that I give them. So access to access it, no access to delete and access to upload. Then I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to hit okay. Now we get this little locked icon next to it. That way we know that it's locked. Now let's go back to our file server and we'll refresh it and see what happens without being logged in. So when I refresh it, it's going to ask me for a username and password. If I do not punch it in, it says unauthorized. And let's see, I'll go back. So here, oh, wait a minute. Maybe we just hacked it. Okay, so I can see the file folder. What happens if I click it? It still asks for the password. So you can see that the folder exists like this, but they can't access it to get in. Now, how secure is this? I don't know. Nobody's tried to hack it before, so I really don't know. But also, to even if you get in, you still need my user level to be able to delete anything. So I'm not too worried about it, but let's log in. So gears is the username and tech is the password. There we go. I'm not going to save it. So now I can see inside the folder. And again, now I can see the picture that is within my network. But what about externally? I'm glad you asked actually. So on here, this is telling you what your internal network ID is. If you click on menu and you go to IP address and say find external address, this is going to tell you what the external address is for your network server. Now I'm going to copy this and, or you can click this open in browser and I'm going to open it in browser and it's still doing a local host. I don't like this. I'm going to paste this into here and see what happens there. Okay. So this is what happens when you try to access from an external address. It says, well, we can't find that. And that's because I have protections set up in my router to keep this from being accessible. So now it's time to go to your router. And this is where things are going to get a little bit different depending on the router you have and depending on your settings and depending on all of that, it might be different. So we're going to go to my router and my router is asking for user and password. Now the thing we're looking for inside the router is your port forwarding tab. Now, if you're not sure where it is in my case, port forwarding is in the WAN tab of the router menu and it is a sub -tab, tab called port forwarding. doesn't matter where you find it, but port forwarding is what you're looking for. Once you find it, we need to set up a port forward. Now you've already got your IP address of the laptop. If you're not sure what it is, we already found it right here on the HTTP 192.16. That is the IP address of this device. That's very, very easy. If you're not sure how to find it, that's the easiest way the software will tell you. You won't have this entry already, but you're going to create a new entry. You can call it whatever you want. In this case, we called it HFS laptop. You want to make sure that both protocols are enabled. You want to make sure the external port is eight zero. Now you can change this port in the software. I'll show you how to do that. But the default port is 80. Now me personally, I do run a different default port. And that's just so that I can keep kind of suspicious characters away. There are going to be pinging for open ports, but they won't know what the port is for. Everybody who's watching this video now knows that the default port is port 80 and you might be susceptible to security vulnerabilities if somebody were to try to ping or brute force your 
server. Now I'm going to my internal IP address is pointed to the laptop and then I'm going to say OK. And that's it. Now we are set up so we can still access internally. But I want to know, can I access externally? OK, the best way to do that is I'm going to use my phone. I'm going to turn off my Wi-Fi and I'm just going to go and type in this other. I'm going to go IP address there so I know what it is. And it is 50 dot 66 dot colon. So I've typed in this full address. Now I'm not going to show you guys the full address because it does create a bit of a security risk for me. But once I've typed in the full address, it will now open up my server and I see the exact same website that we saw on the computer. I can go to remote editor files. It's going to ask me for my username and password. And this in this case, it was gears and the password was tech. I'm going to sign in. And then we'll swipe that away. And now there we go. I've got my screenshot and it opens exactly like we saw on there. Now I can download it to my phone. I can download it to a different computer. I can be anywhere I want in the world and access all of these files as long as the computer is on and as long as HFS is running. Now you can add as many files as you want. You can add as many formats as you want. You can add extra folders if you want. You can add separate folders with separate access levels. So for me, I have a few editors and what I do is I create a folder for each editor. So I would have a folder for one editor, another folder for another editor. And then I have some common files like the Gears and Tech logo, like some music that we've kind of pre vetted for the channel and stuff like that. So you can create all those folders and then provide specific user access for each or group access for the ones that you want group access for. So there's a lot of versatility in this. The only catch is this software must remain running in the background and the computer must remain on. So if you're like me, you have a computer that's on all the time anyway, you just load up an external hard drive, share it over this server, and all of a sudden you have a file server for your entire editing team. This is fully expandable. You can always add more space later. And our system, the flow of our system is very, very simple. So I just dump one video for my editor into their folder. They download all the files from that folder. They edit the video and then they upload the edited video back into their folder. Then all I do is just watch the video, make sure it's good and then pay them and then publish the video and then put the next video into their folder. So the flow is very easy. Managing the files on your computer is as simple as managing any files on the computer. You just drop them in and out. You don't have to use the software. The software is strictly used for the remote access to that server from anywhere else in the world or from your phone or whatever. Now there are other buttons on here that you can do lots of settings. You can you can, you know, put upload caps, you can put download caps, you can put uh, all kinds of limitations if you wanted to. So it is very robust. I don't usually incorporate any of that. I just want this, the editor to get the files. This is one of the easiest ways that I've found for them to do that. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video. We'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.